Kim's. Our assistant will be Dave Wilkinson, and his Vanna White, so to speak, his assistant is Lisa Milano. She works in the sales department and sports department at Hims Inc. in Austin, Texas. Uh, and Dave, I'm just going to let you go ahead and take it from here. All right. Good afternoon, folks, and thank you for tuning in to the Hims Braille Edge webinar. Hopefully, we got to see a number of you at the ACB and NFB conventions. If not, don't worry. We have plenty of other opportunities to see you as the summer goes on. We will be at AER International, World Blind Union, the IDBE conference, and a number of others along the way. Those are just the ones that pop directly into mind. So if you haven't seen the Hims Traveling Roadshow for the summer, don't worry, it may be coming to a city near you. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and start talking about the Braille Edge. And uh, one of the things that we always do with this is we always sort of, we, we have this who is him slide. And of course, you all already know who Hims is or you wouldn't be here. And you already know that we're leaders in the development and manufacturing of assistive technology, both on the blindness and the low vision side. Uh, and hopefully you all are aware that we've had a number of new products this year, such as the Go Vision. We have, uh, number of Reinecker products that have been that we're also branding as Hims products. Uh, we just released a firmware update for the Blaze EZ and ET and also a minor patch upgrade uh, for the Braille for Q2 version 8.5 and we were hoping to have the Braille Edge firmware released by the time of this webinar and it's not quite, quite ready to go so it's going to be out probably next week. So the fe some of the features that we're talking about today, your Braille Edge won't do yet, but mine will. So it'll give you something to look forward to. So that gives you an idea of who HIMS is or who HIMS are, whichever the more grammatically correct uh, way of that being would be. And today what we're going to cover is some of the Braille Edge 40 hardware. I'm going to give a brief description of the Braille Edge and some of its features. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the abilities with the notepad, uh, the file formats that it can handle, uh, some of the ebooks that it can handle, its readiness for UEB, uh, its ease of access with multiple devices, uh, and a couple of new features like the exam, uh, exam mode, um, and also how to update your Braille Edge when this firmware is released. As Michelle said earlier, there will be a chance for questions at the end. Uh, we will unmute folks and ask questions. Uh, for those of you who are blind like me, who uh, don't want to speak when your microphone is unmuted, you can text me questions after this presentation is over to 918-527-0688. And that'll also give you, uh, since the chat window isn't readily accessible to us. So a brief description of the Braille Edge. The Braille Edge 40, uh, as the name would indicate, is a 40-cell refreshable Braille display. It was introduced a few years ago by him. And when it was introduced, it was either the first or one of the first Braille displays to allow multiple connectivity types of devices. You can connect to a Bluetooth and a USB device. And there is a switch on the left-hand side that flips back and forth between Bluetooth and USB, so you don't have to remember any odd keystrokes or key combinations, anything like that. Also on the left-hand side, there is an SD secured digital card slot, and all of the memory of the Braille Edge, when you're using it as a note taker, when you're using its appointment functions, its countdown timer, its clock, its alarm features, all of that is using the secure digital card. If you're not using the secure digital card, the Braille Edge works pretty much just as a Braille display or as a calculator. But with the SD card, we have a number of other options that are uh, readily available to you. <laughs> on the top panel of the Braille Edge, on the left and the right, you have arrow keys that when you are using this with a screen reader work as an up, down, and left and right arrow. Uh, the left and right arrows, sets of arrow keys, when you're using this as a note taker, can do independent can work independently of each other so that you can set the left and right arrows to move by specific uh, units of text by line, sentence, character, paragraph, etc. Uh, and the, the the left and the right can be set differently so that maybe the left side will move by line and the right hand side will move by paragraph. 
In between the two sets of arrow keys, we have a Perkins style keyboard. And like any other Braille display, it's, it's an eight dot uh, Braille keyboard with the backspace being the pinky on the left hand side and enter being the pinky on the right hand side. Below the keyboard, you have eight function keys. And uh, these function keys are one of the things that allow the Braille edge to have really quite a bit of power. Uh, there are function keys for everything from an alt key to a control key, windows key, applications key, tab, et cetera. Um, so when you're using a screen reader, these function keys will work with their pre-assigned function, or of course you can change them in the keyboard configurations of your screen reader. On the right-hand side of the Braille edge towards the back, you have a round power receptacle. Uh, it uses the same charger as our Braille Sense, uh, our old Book Sense. It's pretty much a standard HEMS charger. And then towards the front, you have a USB mini plug. USB mini plug can be used for the USB connection to connect the Braille edge to the computer. You can also use an adapter that goes from USB mini to a full USB so that you can plug a thumb drive into the Braille edge. The front of the Braille edge is really easy to describe. There's absolutely nothing there except for a rectangular button that is surrounded by a tactile ring uh, or a tactile rectangle, I guess. It wouldn't be a ring because it's not round. And that, that button is the on-off button. And so when you press the on-off button, the Braille edge will turn on or off. I just shut mine down and now we'll turn it back on so that I can read my PowerPoint. And now we're back to business. As noted earlier, the Braille Edge does have a basic calculator, a clock, alarm, countdown timer, and a scheduler. All of your applications are available off of a menu, and when you turn your Braille Edge on, you can either have it set to go into the Braille terminal mode, or you can use your scroll buttons, which are on the left and right side of the top panel, and which I did not describe in my description of the Braille of the Braille Edge. The right the left and the right of the Braille display and there's typical hymns uh, scroll buttons. Uh, so you've got just a menu that you can scroll up and down and choose the application that you want. The notepad will let you write in Braille or in BRL or TXT files and it will open, and this is what's really cool, it will open files that are, are Braille formatted or BRF files, BRL files, RTF, DOC, DOCX, so that you can actually take a file that is put onto a secure digital card or a thumb drive that maybe a teacher has prepared or that a colleague has prepared, and you don't have to have your computer in front of you. You can simply open it up right onto the Braille edge. If you do any editing in that document, you're going to have to save it as a Braille or TXT file, but it will open the file in its original format. And again, those file formats are BRL, BRF, text, doc, and docx. And because we have book, uh, library books that are produced as BRF files through Bookshare or through the National Library Service, that means that you can look at a number of ebooks on your Braille on, on your Braille Edge. And the Braille Press has books uh, ebooks produced as Doc or DocX files as well, so that you can use your Braille Edge as an ebook reader and not have it uh, hooked up to your computer or your iPhone or any of your other devices uh, to be able to read a book. It'll just work as its own standalone device. And you have a lot of features available that you would expect at that point. You've got Find, Find Next, Bookmark, et cetera, so that you've got a relatively powerful, low-level word processor available for reading your electronic books. Books need to be downloaded onto to an SD card on your computer, and then you would put the SD card into the Braille Edge for the Braille Edge to see the files. It does not have the ability to directly download books from the internet. It's a Braille display. If you want a full-fledged note taker, we've got those that we'll be happy to sell you. Uh, but for the Braille Edge, you would have to put the book onto a secure digital card, or you could put it onto a thumb drive and plug the thumb drive into the USB mini port. When you're reading and navigating uh, ebooks, you're just going to be using the scroll buttons on the left and, the, and or the right-hand side of the Braille Edge. 
both scroll buttons can be set to move by line, sentence, paragraph, frail display panning, etc. And the left and right hand display or, or scroll buttons don't have to do the same thing. So that, for example, I'm left handed and hand by braille display and I have my right hand scroll button set to move by a complete line. The difference being that a complete line is where you would see a carriage returning your document. So that, that line may be 40 characters long, it may be 300 characters long. It's simply going to scroll down to the next physical line break in the document. As for UEB, this is the year of UEB as of January the 4th. The official U.S. Braille code became UEB, and the Braille Edge is ready for that. We had an update earlier this year that introduced UEB to our note-taking features of the Braille Edge so that when you're writing BRL files, uh, you can choose UEB uh, as, as your Braille code. What we did not have at that point was UEB for our menus, so that when you were looking through the Braille Edge and you would see File, Edit, or uh, applications, notepad, etc. you weren't seeing things like the parentheses in UEB. In the updates to be released next week, we do have UEB uh, throughout the entire uh, note-taking side of the Braille Edge, uh, so that w whether you're setting an appointment or checking or setting the time or looking at parentheses for shortcut keys, UEB is available throughout. You, of course, can still use eBay or the old U.S. Literary Braille Code, but you do have the option of using UEB completely and 100% on the note-taking side of the Braille Edge. As a Braille display, the Braille Edge is reliant upon the screen reader that you're using, whether it's VoiceOver, Window Eyes, NVDA, JAWS, etc., and the UEB support from that screen reader. And that's going to be the case with any Braille display. At that point, you're relying on the screen reader to dictate the Braille display. So you will have UEB support since most of all of your major screen readers have UEB support. So we are totally UEB ready uh, and are quite excited about that. As I mentioned earlier, the Braille Edge was, if not the first, one of the very first Braille displays to allow multiple connectivity to devices. And I still think it's the simplest uh, to switch between uh, one device and the other. It's just an actual tactile switch on the left-hand side of the Braille edge, and there's a Braille B for when it's switched to Bluetooth, so you know that it's switched to Bluetooth. And there's nothing when it's switched to USB. I guess they figure it's by process of elimination that if it's not Bluetooth, it must be USB so that I can have the Braille Edge connected to my PC or my Mac, uh, and at the same time have it connected to my iPhone or my Android device or any other Bluetooth device, and simply flip the switch in between the USB and the, uh, the Bluetooth side and switch which screen I'm looking at. So it's the equivalent of a visual person turning their head to look at their iPhone instead of their computer. In this case, I'm just simply flipping a switch to be able to do so. So I'm able to use the Braille Edge as a Braille display for two different devices simultaneously, and it's ridiculously easy to switch between the two uh, with just a flick of a switch. Something that we're very excited about with the Braille Edge on the Braille display side, uh, we've always been a very powerful Braille display, but some of our function keys did not perform as we expected them to with JAWS, and that has been fixed in the latest version of JAWS, which I think is 17.1.22 or something like that. Uh, you can always check to see if you're running the most current version of JAWS by, by either clicking on your JAWS icon if you're a sightling or alt-tabbing over to JAWS as a blind person, going into health and clicking on search for updates and see if JAWS will find your, your and see if JAWS has an update. This is for JAWS uh, version 17 and beyond, but uh, I'm assuming that most of us are run, that, that are using JAWS are probably running the most recent version of JAWS anyway. And in that version of JAWS, your application key, your Windows key, your Alt key, your Control key, your Tab key, et cetera, work as you would expect them to work. And so we're very excited about that. There's no firmware needed to be updated on the Braille Edge. To get this, you simply update your, your version of JAWS, and our new drivers are built right in. Something that we introduced uh, to the Braille Sense 
a couple of weeks ago. Uh, actually, the concept was introduced some time back, and then we took it a step further with the Braille Sense, and we're now introducing it to the Braille Edge, is an exam mode. Uh, with the Braille Sense, we've had a function lock feature for quite a, all, I lose track of these things, it's well over a year, I believe, where we can lock out specific features and make the Braille Sense either have or not have any of about 80 different features. But what Smarter Balance and other test taking services wanted was the ability to simply and easily lock down the unit to where nothing worked except for the Braille display. And so we introduced that feature to the Braille Sense on a release that was made last week. And that feature will be introduced on the Braille Edge in the firmware release that we are hoping will be available next week. Now without the SD card, it works basically just as a Braille display, except that you do have access to the calculator. So if you really want to go all the way and eliminate the calculator for your students during tests and only use it as a Braille display, we do have an exam mode available. And to do that, you're using your scroll down button in the letter L uh, for entry and exit, and then it's password protected so that you type a password the first time you set this up and you confirm your password so the student can't just turn around and just turn exam mode back off which we certainly don't want them to do. Now, once this new Braille Edge firmware comes out, you're going to want to be knowing what can you do to update your Braille Edge. And so, my friends, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> We've got a link. I believe the link is in the PowerPoint. If it's not, we'll send an, uh, an email uh, to you guys to make sure that everyone has the link when the firmware is released. And you simply download the firmware from the support section of the HEMS web, uh, website, www.hems-inc.com. And under the support section, you'll see the Braille Edge. And under the Braille Edge, you'll see firmware. And you'll download that firmware, and it will be a zipped file. And you are going to take that zipped file, and you are going to unzip it. And you are going to put the contents of that unzipped folder onto either a secure digital card or onto a thumb drive. You are going to put that secure digital card or thumb drive into the Braille Edge. You're going to plug your Braille Edge in. You're going to turn it on, and you're going to press function key 8 and the reset button, which is on the back of the Braille Edge midway down the back panel. You're going to release the reset button, and you're going to hold function key 8 and the Braille Edge will speak to you and it will say starting system update. At that point, you can release function key eight and the Braille Edge will take about 30, 40 seconds to update itself. And then you will have the exam mode. You'll have the UEB throughout the Braille Edge um, and you'll be ready to go. There are also a couple of other features that are gonna be uh, introduced in this firmware that came out after we put this PowerPoint together, one of them being a feature that will lock the keyboard. It will keep the scroll buttons unlocked, but it will allow you to read and not accidentally hit keys if you're on, say, a bumpy bus or a train, and you can lock or unlock your keyboard uh, so that you don't have extraneous characters in your books or your articles or whatever it is that you're reading. The last thing that I'd like to cover, which is not on the PowerPoint, uh, which is which is sort of a cool thing is through the end of July is we have a super secret special Braille Edge price that we had at the NFB and ACB conventions that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of. The Braille Edge is currently two thousand four hundred and ninety-five bucks. It started the year at just under three thousand and then the price dropped to twenty-seven ninety-five and now it's on sale from that price drop to twenty-four ninety-five. So now is a heck of a time to get it. If you're looking at starting the school year and you want to get a Braille display that has some limited note-taking capabilities, the Braille Edge may be for you. So with that being said, we're going to go for questions and answers, uh, comments, all that kind of good stuff. You let me know what you need from me, and if I don't know it, I'll make it up. <laughs> One second, folks. Um, bear with Lisa, she's new at this. <laughs> well, we, um, in the chat window, we don't have any questions at the moment. That's okay, that just means I did an insanely thorough job. <laughs> but I'm happy to wait, and we'll see what happens. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Okay, this is Nolan Crabb, I'm using an audio. 
microphone, so I wasn't sure it would work. I realize this is unsolicited testimony, and you really want questions, not a cheerleading session. I'm but can I just very briefly say, well, I, I, I became the owner of a brand new Edge about three weeks ago, and uh, uh, Jim McCarthy and Andy Leach sold the product to me with, with real, real style, I have to say. And I've been so impressed with the battery life. I've been impressed with the ease of use. Everything you've said here today is rock solid true about the ability to switch between Bluetooth and USB. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to own this thing. It's a, it's a great product. If anyone on this uh, meeting is sort of debating whether to get one or, or sort of tilting between yes and no, uh, I would just say I've been just thrilled to have it. It's been a great addition for me. So uh, my apologies if that's not what you're looking for in terms of questions, but I did want to thank you for an outstanding product. No, and I'm always happy for pats on the back, so thank you very much. You might have to come out on tour with me. <laughs> yes, thank I'm you for your feedback. Those questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa. I was just saying thank you for your feedback, Nolan. Again, if we have any blind users out there who are wanting to text questions to me, you can do that at 918-527-0688. Actually, uh, Dave, we have a question here from Zach. He says, how do you get into the exam mode again? The current key for that, and I emphasize current because this is beta firmware, has not been released. So don't try this on your Braille Edge at home, Zach. It won't work. The current keystroke as of the recording of this webinar is the scroll down button and the letter L. And I emphasize current because this isn't released firmware, so when the Braille Edge comes out, or when the firmware comes out, check the release list and make sure that that is still accurate and we haven't gone and changed it on you. Yes, this is uh, Jay Pellis. And uh, one quick question about the, is it send to clipboard feature? Is that what it's called when you could send text from your Braille sensor, Braille Edge, to a connected device such as an iPhone? Yes. Um, yes, regarding that, I was teaching a client uh, the Braille Sense last year, and I noticed that you can send multi-line um, uh, lines of text by pressing enter after each line, and uh, there was a command to send your final text, and I know on the Braille Edge as of now, am I mistaken in saying you can only send one line of text when you press enter, your text gets sent? Uh, will you be adding multi-line in the future? You know, as you're saying this, I'm writing a message to our engineers to see if we can include that in this update. That would be awesome. That um, would be great because I, <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> my clients using it, especially with the iPhone, just typing into text fields, and uh, even if there's just a limited number of characters that can be sent, uh, just doing multi-line would be it would would be great. Um, otherwise, excellent excellent product. I love the commands in JAWS that I've noticed, some of them are very similar to old Braille speak note taker commands, uh, at least where JAWS is concerned. I don't know if other screeners are like that, but um, very, very great machine. Well, thank you. This is turning out to be way too much fun. <laughs> thank you, Jay. And, and, and Jay, there's a very good chance, I don't know if it will make it into this firmware that's headed for next week, but that doesn't mean that it won't make it into a future firmware release, and I'm certainly doing it everything that we can to see if we can include that this time around. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know what, I, I, I do demonstrate for clients, and one thing I say was, oh, if this had multi-line, it would be the perfect rail display. So, um, <laughs> but, so thanks again for, you know, maybe putting that in there uh, sometime in the future. Thanks. Uh, hi, Dave. I have the la my name is Londa Peterson, by the way. I have the latest version of JAWS, but my uh, control and all and Windows and those aren't working still. I just tried to press the Windows key on my edge, and it doesn't bring up the Start menu. Make sure that you are running. Not that this is the, the panacea for all problems, but make sure that, that we there was an update for the Braille Edge released earlier this year, make sure that you're running that update, which gives you the option of UEB for in your notepad, et cetera. 
which does affect how the Braille display interacts with screen readers and see if you get better results. And if not, please call our tech support folks at 888-520-4467. Um, I'm not trying to dodge the question, I'm just, uh, but they'll be able to do a lot more troubleshooting and eliminating of problems that I'm going to be able to here because sure, it should be right. working. Sure. Okay. Now that I know that for sure, I will follow up on that. Or what you can do is just wait until next week and you only have to update once. <laughs> I do have the latest. I do have the firmware update. Okay. Give our tech support folks a call and give them a run for their money. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions out there? I'm just getting warmed up. It's sort of like Braille Edge Jeopardy. Let's see. Hello? I don't, Hi. I'm not sure, I've never done, hi, okay, you can hear me, I wasn't sure, I haven't done this before. I'm Abby Taylor in Sheridan, Wyoming, and I purchased a Braille Edge a few years ago, and I was using it as both a Braille display and a note taker, and then um, last week, or actually last year when I bought a Braille Sense, I was using the Braille Edge mostly as a display, until, um, a week or so ago when I discovered the SD card slot in the Braille Sense no longer worked. And so I had a file I wanted to work with on the SD card, and I thought I'd try it in the, in the Edge. And for some reason, I could not save the file. It was a doc file. I went in and made some changes to it, but it wouldn't save the file. And I don't know, if, you know, I, I'm not sure why that's happening. Couple of thoughts. You were able to open the file, is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, I was able to open the, open the file, yes. Okay, so that, that eliminates my first idea, which was that it was bigger than a 32 gig SD card, which the Braille Edge won't support, but the Braille No, no, it, it's will. a 2 gig SD card. Yeah, it's a 2 gig SD card. Okay. I don't have an immediate answer. Again, give our tech support folks a call. They will be able to help out. Um, and we actually welcome, speaking of our tech support folks, we have a brand new tech support person named Jim Walton. Uh, he is not from the TV show The Waltons, uh, but uh, he apparently does not like when people say good night, Jim Bob. But okay. uh, <laughs> um, but he is very good. We were lucky to get him, and so give him a call, and you can we'll play fix the Braille Edge with Jim with Jim Walton. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And Dave, we do have a chat question here. It says, what is the row of keys above the cursor routing button? That row of keys is a series of eight function keys. And Lisa, I'm backing up on the uh, PowerPoint so that I can go in order of what they do. Okay. Um, it's, let's see if I can, give me a second. Uh, from left to right, the very far left button is escape, then you have a control key, then you have a small space, you have an alt and a shift, then we jump over the space bar and we have an insert key, a windows key, uh, an and an application key, which means that I'm missing one somewhere. What am I missing? Uh, no, shift key, windows key. Uh, an application key, that's four keys. So again, from left to right, we have escape, alt, shift, insert. No, I am missing one. Um, oh, now you're going to make me look this thing up. <laughs> tab. Really one of these. Escape tab. Yeah. yeah, escape tab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, I don't know how to use these things. I make it up as I go. Thank you. <laughs> What I should have done is turn JAWS keyboard help on and just hit the thing. Um, that'll teach me. But that's what those buttons are. They're function keys that you can use when you're using the Braille, the Braille Edge as a Braille display. They also will let you do things like you can use Control F when you're in the notepad feature in the file for find. Control N will create a new file. So you've got uh, Windows type commands that those function keys allow you to do. Okay. And Dave, we have another question here. What kind of warranty comes with the Braille Edge 40? Braille Edge 40 comes with a two-year warranty. We are, of course, happy to sell you product maintenance agreements after that fact, uh, but it does come with a two-year warranty, so you're good to go for a couple of years. Okay. 
And it looks like we have another question. What is the terminal clipboard and how does it work? The terminal clipboard is a feature that allows you to <laughs> write on, it, it, it essentially suspends the connection between your uh, Braille display and your iPhone is what it's mostly used for. Um, and it waits until you press enter to send that information to your <laughs> iPhone. So what it does um, is it allows you to, to use your basic editing commands before sending the message. You don't ever run into any of the weird function, the, any of the weird translation stuff that you run into with Apple devices. So if I'm press an L and then stop typing, I won't get like or anything. It's just going to wait until I hit enter to send all the information to it. And you can exit and, uh, and enter the clipboard mode. To exit it, you simply press enter. Uh, to enter it, I'm frantically looking it up in our uh, user guide here. Point one, please. <laughs> if I had music, I'd play it for you right here. <laughs> do, 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 do. One more time. To enter the terminal clipboard, you're pressing space, enter, and the letter I. And the Braille display will say terminal clipboard, and then you can just write your text. And when you press enter, the text is sent to your mobile device. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, gives you, that, that explains a little bit what terminal clipboard does. On the Braille sense, what Jay was talking about a while ago is you can actually send multi-line messages. So you can hit enter, uh, you've got a carriage returned, and instead of sending the text to your mobile device, it puts a line, a, a new line in the document, and it waits until you press enter S to send to the mobile device. Now, when all of you go home later and you try your terminal clipboard, be warned. Your Apple device or your, your mobile device can only take so much data at once. So when you hit enter, it's a little slow or to interpret all of that data that your Braille edge is just sent to before it actually appears on your screen. So it's going to stutter and, stutter and stammer a little bit. So it is not instantaneous. Right. And um, Dave, we have another. Oops. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, okay. We I was just going to quickly ask if there's. Go ahead. I'm no, done. that's okay. You first. Go ahead. Go for it. Oh, sorry. Super quick. Is there a um, limit to the number of characters that I can put into that terminal clipboard? I'm obviously not going to write war and peace in there, but does it have limits? Do you know? You know, I don't remember seeing a defined limit. I would not do more than a few sentences. It's just, and, and, and I mean, you could probably write a sonnet, but you'd have to go get a cup of coffee before the iPhone actually got it all. <laughs> So the, I do not know of a specific character number, but it's, I mean, you know, it may be like a thousand, which would be a page. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to have to go home and count. <sighs> All right, Dave, we have another chat question. It says, how difficult is it to switch between USB and a Bluetooth device when the Braille Edge 40 is in terminal mode? It is easier than any other device on the planet. It is a slide switch on the left hand. Boy, that was a bold statement. Um, in this presidential year of campaign promises and all that type of stuff, I'm confident saying that this one is accurate. Um, you simply slide a switch between USB and Bluetooth. And there is a B so that when the switch is pushed forward, it's closer to the B for Bluetooth. So you know it's in Bluetooth mode. And then when it's back towards the side that has nothing, you're in USB mode. So it is literally just a slide switch on the left-hand side of the unit. Okay. Bring it on. We're getting into the groove now. <laughs> Any other questions out there? See, the problem is if you guys don't keep asking questions, I have to go back to work, and that's no fun. <laughs> Are you aware of whether anyone makes a cover that you can just simply put it over the top while the unit is seated is on the desk to sort of protect the cells and 
the keys and so on. Is there just a, a I'm just thinking now of like a top. I don't know how to describe it better. Does anyone make such a, a creature? I don't want to have to put it in the case when I walk away for lunch or something, but it it would be great to be able to protect it a little bit. It would, and you know, we don't have those for the Braille Edge, and we do for the Braille Sense, which makes no sense. We have this little flat, elastic plastic thing uh, that goes over the Braille Sense that that protects it from dust and such things, and why we didn't develop that for the Braille Edge is another question that I'm now writing out to our folks in the in the international office. It would be really cool to have. Yeah. You know, if I could chime in here, it's Jay Pellis again. Uh, from what I understand, there is a uh, carrying case from a company called Executive Products that they've developed, and I would assume that would actually have, like, a Velcro cover that you can close uh, over the top, but, of course, like I said, it's a carrying case, uh, and unfortunately, I think it's about $100, so it's, it's quite expensive, but uh, I've used their cases in the past, and they do protect products very well, very uh, well-made leather case. That would have a Velcro cover. Yeah, it, it I agree. Actually That's is a, a great case. It actually is a magnetic cover, and oh, the only okay. reason that I specify magnetic is that one of the one of the sounds that I like least in the world is ripping Velcro, and so I love that case for the 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 quietness of the magnets that you can just open. But yes, you're right. Uh, that does have a cover that would go over the top of it. What's cool about this little Braille Sense cover that we have is that it's literally just this very thin, oh. I don't even know how to describe it. It's 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 a little weird when you first pick it up. It feels a little too close to it. I remember like not pampers, but those little pull up pull ups feel like um, when you've got a little kid. It's just this thin, weird material. Um, but you put it over the braille display, and you can actually still read through through the material and you feel the braille display. Mm -hmm. Any other questions out there? Well, if not, thank you all very much for tuning in today. Uh, for those of you who will be at AER, we do have a couple of presentations on the program for AER. Uh, as I said earlier, we will be at IDBE. We're also at the World Blind Union. Uh, hopefully we got to see some of you at NFB and ACB. And we've got lots of other events that we will be at uh, as the fall starts. One plug, a rather shameless plug to put out there for you teachers who are in the, the audience, we do have Braille Sense workshops that we offer that we can offer uh, CEUs from ACB REP. Uh, if we get a group of about 10 people, I'm happy to come out and bring Braille Senses. And I realize this is the Braille Edge thing. I told you it was a shameless plug. Um, but I'm happy to come to your school in your town uh, or send one of my other uh, him henchmen or hench people, uh, and we will conduct a workshop for you, and you'll get either three or six hours of CEU credits from ACBREP. If you're interested in that, send me an email at dave, D-A-V-E, at hymns-inc.com. And Dave, what is your phone number again if they want to text you some questions? My number is 918. 527-0688. And either I or someone else will see you guys soon. And uh, please, I don't know what the webinar is the, for next month, do you? I do not have it at my, uh, my ready right here. Nope. That's all right. You can be assured that our marketing folks will send you plenty of emails letting you know what it is. So we'll see you in August. And thank you guys very much and have a great summer.